you know. Uh, that's the way they thought about it, so it must be correct. So that, that would bring that model in, into, the, into the present. And then, because we brought it into the present, those that come after us carry it into their present. In the realms of human consciousness and the shadowy corners of government secrecy, one name emerges as a beacon of the extraordinary, Ingo Swan. But who is this man whose name is synonymous with the enigmatic practice of remote viewing? And why are his revelations about alien moon bases sending ripples through the scientific and paranormal communities alike? Today, we're about to answer precisely what remote viewing is and delve deep into the life of Ingo Swan, a man who dared to traverse the unseen landscapes of consciousness, a pioneer who dared to explore the unseen landscapes of consciousness, unveiling mysteries and truths never revealed before. Prepare to venture into the unknown. Uh, uh, of course, uh, in, in the 70s, uh, George Leonard wrote a book saying, entitled, We Discovered Alien Bases on the Moon. Who exactly is Ingo Swan? Ingo Swan stands as a colossus, a figure whose contributions have both illuminated and challenged our understanding of psychic phenomena. But who exactly is this enigmatic individual? And how did he come to be at the forefront of such a controversial and captivating field? Born on September 14, 1933, in Telluride, Colorado, Ingo Swan's early life was, in many ways, unassuming. Nestled amidst the majestic peaks of the Rocky Mountains, young Ingo grew up with a profound sense of wonder, always gazing upwards, whether at the starlit heavens or the towering summits around him. But what was it about the cosmos that captivated young Ingo so intensely? It was the boundless mysteries and the infinite possibilities that the universe held. Little did the world know that this child, with his insatiable curiosity, would grow up to challenge our very perceptions of reality and consciousness. As Swan matured, so did his interests. Drawn to the arts, he pursued a degree in biology from Westminster College in Salt Lake City, Utah. Yet the scientific rigors of biology couldn't quench his thirst for understanding the intangible, the ethereal realms of human consciousness. It was during these formative years that Swan began to experience episodes of heightened intuition, precognitive dreams, and moments where he felt a connection to something beyond the tangible world. But could these experiences be mere coincidences, or were they early manifestations of a mind destined to transcend the ordinary? These experiences, while initially disconcerting, would lay the foundation for his future endeavors, including his groundbreaking developments in the field of remote viewing. But Swan's contributions weren't limited to mere theory or isolated experiments. He collaborated closely with researchers like Dr. Harold E. Puthoff and Russell Targ at the Stanford Research Institute. Together, they embarked on a series of experiments that sought to validate and understand the phenomenon of remote viewing. These experiments, often conducted under strict scientific protocols, produced results that were both astounding and confounding. Time and again, Swan demonstrated an uncanny ability to accurately describe distant locations, hidden objects, and even events that had yet to occur. However, it wasn't just the academic and scientific communities that took notice of Swan's exceptional abilities. His work caught the attention of government agencies, leading to collaborations that for many years remained shrouded in secrecy. One such notable project was the Stargate Project, a code name for a secret U.S. Army unit established in 1978. This project, veiled in layers of confidentiality, was a convergence of psychic exploration and strategic intelligence. It was a venture into the uncharted territories of the mind, seeking to harness the latent powers within to serve the interests of national security. What I call a prison camp, uh, the buildings in it were like American barrack types of things, two stories. This wasn't in America, by the way. And it was surrounded, it was in a forest. There was forest cover everywhere. It was very hard to photograph from the spy in the sky, satellites and everything like that. It had uh, three enormous wire fences with barbed wire patrolled by dogs. 
and uh, but it had a railhead. It had a railway that came up to the front major building, and there was a road leading to it. And the road seemed to be equally protected on both sides for a considerable distance, and so forth and so on. Under the auspices of this project, Swan and other remote viewers, individuals believed to possess similar psychic proficiencies, were tasked with using their psychic abilities for intelligence gathering during the Cold War, a period marked by geopolitical tensions and the looming shadow of conflict. But why would the government, with its plethora of conventional intelligence resources, invest in such a clandestine and seemingly implausible project? The answer lies in the unrelenting quest for strategic advantage and the pursuit of knowledge that could potentially alter the dynamics of power and surveillance. It was the potential implications and applications of remote viewing in intelligence and reconnaissance that were too significant to ignore. The prospect of perceiving distant locations, accessing guarded secrets, and uncovering hidden agendas through the power of the mind presented an avenue of exploration that held the promise of transcending the limitations of conventional intelligence gathering methods. Yet, beyond the experiments, the government projects, and the accolades, Ingo Swan's true legacy lies in his relentless pursuit of understanding. He wasn't just content with demonstrating psychic abilities, he sought to understand their origins, their implications, and their potential applications in various fields, from archaeology to space exploration. His numerous publications, including the seminal work Penetration, the question of extraterrestrial and human telepathy, offer profound insights into the nature of consciousness and the universe. The previously hidden evidence and analysis. The moon, our closest celestial neighbor, has been a subject of fascination and mystery for centuries, and recent discoveries have only deepened this intrigue. But what does this newly surfaced evidence entail? And how does it alter the tapestry of our understanding of alien moon bases? The journey begins with a meticulous examination of photographs, ones that were seemingly overlooked in the vast archives of lunar exploration. One such photograph, captured around the Archimedes crater during the Apollo missions, and later published in National Geographic, depicts what some lunar conspiracy theorists have termed the Archimedes platform, an anomalous structure on the lunar surface measuring roughly five miles long and one mile wide. At first glance, it could be dismissed as a mere play of shadows and light, but a closer, more discerning look reveals it to be the planar face of a ridge with a fairly steep slope, challenging the theories of its artificial origin. Another photograph, taken by the Lunar Orbiter in February 1967, is claimed by NASA conspiracy theorist Richard Hoagland to showcase the Shard, a mile-high spire seemingly rising from the lunar surface lacking any plausible geological explanation. However, scrutiny of the original NASA image suggests that this depiction may be a result of image manipulation, transforming a tiny spot of light into a blurry image artifact. But could these structures be mere coincidences, tricks of perception, or do they hold the key to unraveling the existence of alien moon bases? Recent discoveries have only deepened this intrigue, revealing structures and anomalies that scientists are eager to study. One such discovery is a massive structure located beneath the moon's South Pole Aitken Basin, one of the largest preserved craters in the solar system. This structure is extraordinarily dense, weighing in at least 2.18 billion kilograms and measuring more than 300 kilometers in depth and 2,000 kilometers in length. The sheer scale of this structure raises pivotal questions about its origin composition, and purpose. Is it a relic of a bygone era, a fragment of the celestial bodies that collided to form the moon, or is it something entirely different, a piece of the cosmic puzzle waiting to be understood? Researchers believe that this anomaly could be composed of metal from the core of an asteroid, or oxides from the crystallization of a magma ocean. To illustrate the magnitude of this discovery, Peter B. James, the lead author from Baylor University, compared it to a pile of metal five times larger than the Big Island of Hawaii buried underground. This groundbreaking finding was facilitated by NASA's Gravity Recovery and Interior Laboratory mission, which studies the moon's gravitational field to gain insights into its internal composition. The concept of remote viewing. 
What exactly is it? In the 1970s, the term remote viewing was relatively unknown to the general populace. It was a practice that claimed to harness the psychic abilities of the mind, allowing individuals to perceive and describe distant locations, events, or objects without any prior knowledge or the use of the five traditional senses. And at the forefront of this burgeoning field was Ingo Swan. His innate psychic abilities, combined with his rigorous approach to research, made him a pivotal figure in the development and popularization of remote viewing. But what was it about remote viewing that intrigued the minds of scientists and researchers? Remote viewing is a practice that purportedly allows individuals to perceive, describe, and experience details about a target, be it a location, object, or person, that is inaccessible through conventional sensory means, typically due to distance, time, or shielding. It is a form of extrasensory perception, a gateway to the unseen dimensions of existence where the mind becomes the vessel of exploration. But could the human mind truly transcend the limitations of time and space? The roots of remote viewing can be traced back to ancient civilizations, where seers, oracles, and prophets were believed to possess the ability to perceive events, locations, and information beyond the scope of ordinary human perception. These ancient practitioners were revered and sought after, their insights deemed as divine revelations or mystical visions, guiding societies through the labyrinth of existence. Beyond the confines of remote viewing, the broader realm of psychic phenomena and spiritual powers has always been a subject of fascination and intrigue. These phenomena are often seen as manifestations of a higher consciousness or a connection to a spiritual realm, such as with the Oracle of Delphi, who was believed to possess the ability to communicate with the divine, receiving visions and prophecies. The belief in spiritual powers and psychic abilities, such as clairvoyance and telepathy, suggests the existence of untapped potentials within the human mind, capable of accessing information and insights beyond the reach of ordinary perception. This age-old fascination with spiritual powers Intertwined with the quest for understanding the unknown, paved the way for the modern exploration of practices like remote viewing. However, the modern conceptualization and development of remote viewing as a structured practice emerged in the latter half of the 20th century, during a period marked by the Cold War tensions and the clandestine race for technological and psychological supremacy. It was during this era that government agencies, notably within the United States, initiated research and experimentation on remote viewing and psychic phenomena, seeking to harness these abilities for intelligence and reconnaissance purposes. Projects such as Stargate Project became the crucible of remote viewing research, where individuals like Ingo Swan played pivotal roles in shaping the methodologies and protocols of remote viewing practices. However, the scientific exploration of remote viewing is not without its challenges and controversies. The inherent subjectivity and intangibility of remote viewing experiences pose significant obstacles to empirical validation and measurement. How can science grapple with phenomena that defy conventional methods of observation and measurement? Parallel to the scientific viewpoints, the skeptical perspectives on remote viewing are integral to the discourse, serving as the counterbalance to the claims and the experiences reported by remote viewers. Does the moon harbor alien life? The shocking truth. The concept of alien moon bases is not a novel one. It is deeply rooted in the annals of human thought and the exploration of extraterrestrial possibilities. Alien moon bases are theorized to be structures, either active or remnants, constructed and possibly inhabited by extraterrestrial entities. These bases are speculated to be located on the lunar surface or beneath it, hidden from the prying eyes of terrestrial observers. Even historical accounts and ancient texts have alluded to the presence of otherworldly constructions on the moon, weaving tales of advanced civilizations, interstellar travelers, and cosmic architects. But are these tales mere fabrications of the human mind, or do they hold grains of truth, waiting to be unearthed? The answer might lie in Ingo Swan's claims. His assertions regarding alien moon bases are the stuff of legends, tales that weave the fabric of the extraordinary with the threads of the plausible. He specifically claimed in his book, Penetration, 
the question of extraterrestrial and human telepathy, that the moon was a silent witness to extraterrestrial activities, a canvas depicting a myriad of alien constructions and entities. His revelations painted a detailed picture of the moon not as a barren, lifeless rock, but as a theater of cosmic events, teeming with mysteries and secrets. One of Swan's notable claims revolves around his remote viewing sessions, where he purportedly observed structures on the moon. He described seeing intricate constructions, including buildings and roads, indicative of intelligent design and purposeful construction. These descriptions, laden with details, have fueled speculations and theories regarding the existence of advanced civilizations on the moon. But could these structures be the remnants of an ancient civilization? Or are they active bases harboring extraterrestrial life? Swan's interactions with the entities he encountered are also a focal point of his revelations. He has provided descriptions of these beings, delineating their appearances, behaviors, and the atmospheres they inhabit. These accounts have not only enriched the narratives surrounding extraterrestrial life, but have also raised questions about the intentions, advancements, and the civilizations of these entities. Are these beings explorers like us, seeking to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos, or do they harbor different unfathomable objectives? The reasons behind Swan's silence and his eventual decision to speak out are intertwined with the complexities of his experiences and the prevailing attitudes towards paranormal phenomena. Swan, aware of the skepticism and the scientific scrutiny surrounding paranormal claims, chose to tread cautiously, meticulously documenting his experiences and revelations. But what compelled him to break his silence? And how did his revelations impact the ongoing discussions on extraterrestrial life and psychic phenomena? Swan's decision to divulge his experiences was not impulsive. It was a calculated move, driven by his desire to shed light on the unexplored realms of human capabilities and the existence of otherworldly entities. His revelations have not only enriched the discourse on alien moon bases, but have also challenged the conventional paradigms, prompting a re-evaluation of our understanding of life, intelligence, and the universe. Life Beyond Earth The Existence of Aliens The significance of the moon in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence is paramount. Its proximity to Earth makes it a strategic vantage point for observing our planet and possibly establishing contact. The exploration of the moon is not just a venture into the unknown, it is a pursuit of answers to the age-old questions of extraterrestrial existence and interstellar interactions. But why would extraterrestrial entities choose the moon? And what could be the implications of their presence on this celestial body? Could it be that the moon's desolation offers a cloak of invisibility, a shield from prying terrestrial eyes? The absence of an atmosphere, the stark landscapes and the profound silence might be the very attributes that make it an ideal outpost for extraterrestrial civilizations. The reason for extraterrestrial life potentially being drawn to the moon might also lie in the moon's unique attributes. Its synchronous rotation, where one side always faces Earth, provides a shielded zone hidden from terrestrial observation. This dark side of the moon could potentially harbor bases, outposts, or even entire colonies shielded from our view. The moon's subterranean caverns, a result of its volcanic past, could offer shelter from cosmic radiation, making them ideal habitats. The existence of life on the moon has been a subject of many theories, each presenting a unique perspective and a set of intriguing possibilities. One such theory posits that the moon could be an artificial satellite, a creation of an advanced extraterrestrial civilization. Proponents of this theory point to the moon's size, orbit, and composition as being unusually perfect for supporting life on Earth, suggesting an intelligent design rather than natural formation. They argue that the moon's stabilizing effect on Earth's axial tilt and rotation has allowed for the development of a stable climate and consequently, life. Could it be that the moon is a deliberate construction, a celestial gift from our extraterrestrial neighbors designed to foster life on our planet? Another theory delves into the possibility of ancient extraterrestrial visitations. Some researchers and enthusiasts believe that the moon once served as a stopover for alien civilizations exploring the cosmos. 
They point to unexplained structures on the lunar surface, such as the purported shard and tower, as potential remnants of extraterrestrial constructions. Another fascinating theory is the hollow moon hypothesis, which suggests that the moon is not a solid celestial body, but is instead hollow. This theory is often linked to the idea of the moon as an artificial construct, possibly serving as a spacecraft or a base for extraterrestrial beings. Proponents point to the moon's lower density compared to Earth and the significant size of lunar craters as evidence of its hollow nature. If the moon is indeed hollow, could it be housing extraterrestrial inhabitants within its cavernous interior, silently observing humanity from their concealed abode? The spaceship moon theory, an extension of the hollow moon hypothesis, not only posits that the moon is hollow, but also asserts that it is a spaceship parked in orbit around the Earth. This theory, proposed by two Soviet scientists, Michael Vasin and Alexander Shcherbakov in 1970, suggests that the moon is a front, a shell encapsulating an advanced control center. They base this theory on the anomalies found in the craters of the moon, stating that the depth of these craters doesn't correlate with the expected impact, implying a hard, armored hull beneath the surface. Could the moon be a derelict spaceship, a relic of advanced extraterrestrial technology silently orbiting our planet? Historically, the moon has been a subject of fascination, reverence, and intrigue. Ancient civilizations looked up to it as a deity, a celestial being with powers and mysteries. But as time progressed and our understanding evolved, the moon transformed from a divine entity to a potential habitat. Over the decades, numerous lunar missions, both manned and unmanned, have scoured the lunar surface, seeking signs of life or its remnants. While no concrete evidence of current life has been found, anomalies in photographs, unexplained structures, and peculiar shadows have often ignited debates and speculations. The ongoing search for extraterrestrial intelligence. In the vast expanse of space exploration and the quest for extraterrestrial intelligence, a shadow of skepticism looms large over the role of governmental agencies, such as NASA and the Department of Defense. A palpable sentiment of distrust resonates among many, stemming from the belief that there's more to the story than what's been officially disclosed. This skepticism isn't just a fleeting doubt, it's rooted in the conviction that the public has been systematically shielded from the full truth about extraterrestrial encounters and the potential of psychic phenomena. The question on many minds is, what are they hiding? This sentiment of concealment is further fueled by the demand for transparency and accountability, a demand echoed by individuals like Stephen Greer, founder of The Disclosure Project, who has been vocal about government secrecy on UFOs and extraterrestrial life. Many assert that it's the right of the citizenry to be informed about any interactions, discoveries, or knowledge pertaining to alien life forms and unexplained phenomena. The moon, with its enigmatic allure, other celestial bodies and the vastness of the universe have always been subjects of immense curiosity. Yet the perceived limitations on exploration and the selective dissemination of information have only intensified the thirst for knowledge. As we gaze up at the night sky, the collective yearning is clear, a desire for unfiltered truths, untainted by secrecy or political agendas, the collective desire for unadulterated truths and the quest to pierce the veil of governmental secrecy lead us to the ongoing endeavors in the scientific community, particularly the relentless pursuits of the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI. This organization stands as a beacon of hope and a manifestation of our unyielding curiosity about the cosmos. SETI's multifaceted approach to uncovering the mysteries of the universe includes meticulous analyses of cosmic signals and in-depth studies of various celestial bodies, each endeavor meticulously designed to detect any semblance of intelligent extraterrestrial life. The journey is fraught with challenges and uncertainties, but the pursuit of truth and the potential for discovery fuel the relentless quest for understanding.